I've been busy painting some fish this week so today I want to show you what I did with this goldfish painting. I've talked before about how I've been doing studies lately before I paint the main painting. When I say a study I don't mean a little thumbnail sketch to work out the composition. I mean a proper finished painting. They really do make a difference for me. I've found that when I start painting the study there's very little pressure on me because I know it's just a study. I'm free to experiment and play around with colours and techniques. Then when I'm finished the study and I start the main painting there's less anxiety because I've already painted it. I've got a good idea of what it's going to look like as a finished painting and I know where the problems are that I can avoid on the main painting. So I find painting studies to be really helpful. I often get asked about the paper that I use to paint my studies on so I'll quickly show you that. Sometimes I'll paint them in my watercolour journals. I've got some Winsor & Newton journals and this journal here from a company called Etcher. Both of them are good for studies. Lately I've been buying these blocks of Saunders Waterford paper. It's not as expensive as my Arche or Fabriano paper but it's still good quality paper and it's lovely to paint on. When I painted this fish I thought to myself I'll be right I won't need a study for this one. So I went ahead and I stretched my Fabriano paper and off I went. That was a mistake. I ended up overworking areas. This fin here on my study gave me trouble. I tried to follow the reference photo too closely and I wasn't happy with that. It looked overworked to me. So I was halfway through this painting when I realised that it was going to be a study and I'd wasted a sheet of my Fabriano paper. Not to worry, this first painting helped me fly through the second painting and I like the second painting a lot more. So let's have a look at it now. The first thing I did was paint a wash of Windsor lemon all over the top of the body of the fish. The Windsor lemon, I wanted it to be a really good strong colour. I didn't want it to be wishy-washy because I'm not going to do a lot of work on the top of this. So I wanted the yellow to cover really well. So I used a lot of pigment. While that wash was wet, I dropped on some orange that I mixed up. This is cadmium red mixed with Windsor lemon. And I want that orange to blend with the yellow. I still want to see the yellow, I don't want to completely cover it. But I want those two colours to blend together on the paper. I started to dry the paint on the paper with the hairdryer and then I dropped some water into it to create some watercolour blooms and disturb the pigment and that created some texture on the body of the fish. So then I started to paint in the fins and it was the fins that I overworked on the study that I did so I didn't want to do that again. I wanted to get these in as quickly and as easily as I could without fussing with the paint too much. So that's a grey that I mixed up from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I wet the paper before I put it on and now I'm putting on some orange. So that's the orange that I used on the body of the fish. I pulled that orange paint down into the grey. I did the same thing on the eye of the fish that I did on the body. I put the Windsor lemon on there first and then I put the orange over the top. Up to this fin up here I've got some grey. This is French Ultramarine mixed with burnt sienna. I'm painting that onto the dry paper. 
pulling it in from the outer edge back in towards the fish. I want to leave some white paper showing so I won't completely cover everything. Now I've just got water on my brush and I'm softening that edge along the front. This fin looks quite a bit different on the reference photo. When I painted my first painting, this was the area that I wasn't happy with. I tried to follow the reference photo too closely and it ended up looking stiff and overworked and I didn't like it. So I thought I'd do this fin a different way. So this is grey on dry paper. I've washed the grey out of my brush and now I've got some orange. So this is cadmium red mixed with Windsor lemon. Push that up into the grey. The grey is still slightly damp in some places. In other places it's dried. So as I said, this is the fin that I struggled with on the first painting. It was too stiff and I wanted to loosen up a little. So I was determined not to do that again. Here I'm dropping a bit of Windsor lemon onto it. I left that to dry and I'll come back to it later. So then I started to paint in the other fins and I did the same thing. I was trying to be loose and not fuss too much with the paint. I stuck with this larger brush because I knew if I switched down to a smaller brush I'd start to fuss and fiddle too much. So I've got all that painted in and now there's a lighter section of this fin here. So I want to try and leave as much white paper showing as I can. Then I thought I wanted to add a bit of interest so I dropped some water in there while the paint was drying and that created those watercolour blooms that added a bit of texture to the fin. I've just painted this area in here and now I'm dropping some Windsor lemon onto it. I've painted in a bit more with some orange and Windsor lemon. I'm using the grey again and I'm painting in this longer section. So here I'm on the dry paper as well and I'm still using my bigger brush. I don't use my smaller brush until the end of the painting. Down here I want to leave some white paper showing on the edge of the tail. And I'll drop some French ultramarine into that to add interest to the grey. Okay, so that's the fish all washed in. So I've added the eyes. Now I want to paint a shadow along the bottom of the fish. This I'm going to do on wet paper because I want the paint to have soft paint edges. So I'll use the grey that I've been using on the fins. I paint that straight over the top of the yellow wash onto the wet paper. I keep going all the way along the bottom edge with it. Then I start to add some detail on the eye. I wet it first with water and I use some cadmium red. And that bleeds over the water and adds some interest to the eye. I added some more red up the top of the fish as well. I paint that on the wet paper too. And I paint in some gills on the side. Towards the end of the painting I got out my smaller brush. This is a Da Vinci Maestro as well, but this brush size is a number two. So I start adding some more detail with that. And then I came back to this fin up here. 
This is the fin that I had trouble with on my first painting. So I'm using the grey paint that I mixed up again. And I'm painting on some directional lines from the outside edge, pulling them in towards the fish. So I was mindful here of not overworking it like I did on the first painting. I did that all the way around and then I got my little eradicator brush out. This is a Rosemary & Co eradicator brush. And I started to pull off some highlights on the fin. So my brush is wet, the paper's dry, I use a tissue to take the paint off. Then I painted on a splash of water behind the fish. I painted that on the wet paper as well. And then I was done. When I paint, I try to always strike a balance between detail and looseness. I like detail, but I also want to show the beautiful qualities of watercolour paint. And I want to enjoy using it. So I find that it's always a bit of a juggling act with my style of painting. I'm really happy with the way that this little fish painting has turned out and I feel that I've achieved what I set out to achieve. The full length version of this tutorial will be available on my Patreon site this weekend. My patrons will have access to my line drawing and my finished painting and I know that they're going to have a lot of fun painting it. Thank you, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel so that you can get notified each time I publish a new video. Okay, have fun and I'll see you soon. When I painted this fish, I thought to myself, I'll be right, I won't need to study for this. So I went ahead and I stretched my Fabry, Fabry, Fabry paper. Fabry paper. They really do make a difference for me and I found that when I start painting the When I paint I always My patrons will have access to the line drawing, my finished painting. Yep, they will. And I want to enjoy using it. So it's always a bit of a juggling act. Juggling. You're juggling. So it's always a bit of a juggling act with my style of painting. I'm really happy with this fish and I'm pleased with the way it's ch churned out. I'm really happy with this painting and I'm pleased with the way it's turned out. Same thing. Same thing.